Welcome to Electron Line, and here we're going to get into the real meat of thermodynamics. We're going to talk about gases, how they change, how they go from one state to another state, and what defines the state of a gas. And starting out, we're going to talk about what we call the state variables of a gas, and those are pressure, volume, and temperature. So that means that a gas can be in a particular state, let's say state one, or the initial state, and it will have a particular pressure, a particular volume and a particular temperature at that state, then something happens to the state, there's going to be a thermodynamic process, and now it finds itself in a different state. Let's call it state two. At that point, it will have a different pressure, a different volume, and a different temperature. And so once you've achieved this new state, once a gas is in this new state and has new values for pressure, volume, and temperature, you really have no idea how it got from state one to state two. It can go there in various ways different kinds of thermodynamic processes can occur to go from one state to another state of a gas. But no matter where you start from or where you end up, at any point in time, let's say halfway through any kind of process or anywhere along the change of state of the gas, you can have a different pressure, a different volume, a different temperature anywhere along that path. Notice that even though you can take different paths from one state of a gas to another state of a gas, there <coughs> It, it will not reveal anything about that path taken by just looking at the end state. What happens when you go from one state of a gas to another state of a gas is that there will be some sort of heat exchange. We use the variable Q for heat, and so either heat is added to the gas or heat is or taken away from the gas. A gas can do work, or you can do work on a gas, and we'll get more into that, but just a, a sneak preview of that. Gas can do work by expanding and pushing against things. So if the gas expands against something, making the container that it's in larger or pushing things out of the way, it can actually do work. Or when you compress a gas, then, you actually do working, then you're actually doing work on the gas. And finally, the gas will have internal energy. So in the first state, the gas will have a, a certain amount of internal energy, and in the second state, it may have a different amount of internal energy. It turns out that the internal energy of a gas depends only on one of the three state variables, namely temperature, and also on the specific heat of the particular gas we're dealing with, and of course, the amount of quantity of the gas that you have. Uh, but so, internal energy is only related to the temperature of a gas, and what happens between one and two will affect how much heat is exchanged and in what direction, how much work is done, and either on or by the gas, and how much the internal energy of the gas changes. That will define how much the pressure, the volume, and temperature changes when you go from one state of the gas to another state of the gas, and that's why they call those the state variables. So a quick overview. We'll get into the numeric part in the next few videos coming up.